Okay, YouTube, we're going to do some reloading here. We got about 500 308 shells there, clean, primed, sized, and uh, ready to load. We have the RCBS powder dump, the RCBS rock chucker, and uh, we're going to get going. We have 168 grain Botel hollow point nozzlers. We're going to give these a shot in the 308. We're only going to do about 20 or 30 of them. And then we're going to see how they shoot going to the range tomorrow. The powder we're using is the IMR 4064. And we have 42 grains of that. Now let's check the length of the bullet. Should be about 3520, 3522 in uh, millimeters and 1.387 in standard. So, that's acceptable. Once you get going with this, it becomes uh, pretty quick. So we have to just make sure that all the bullets meet our specifications. And once everything's been set and tightened down, the process becomes rather quick to get the reloads made. Of course, all the uh, hard work is done in the preparation of cleaning, sizing, polishing the brass. Most of this is once fired Lake City and Hornady brass that I was either picked up or uh, was given so let's see how this this goes Not a lot of workspace on this workbench, but <clears throat> it's a workbench, and I use it for all sorts of stuff, not just reloading. Once we make this round with this powder and that grain and the 168 grain projectiles and we find that this is adequate out of the RCBS Reaper then we'll pump out all 500 of these but we want to get some test ones done and see what what the right powder mix for this weight of bullet with the the IMR 4064 here some notes on the side about 223 and 308 and with the 150 grain 308 and the 168 grain 308. But like everything else, the prep work is where all the dirty, long time spent making it right. So this last step of actually pressing a bullet into the case is simple. Of course these are all already primed as well. I have the RCBS Sonic Cleaner back there and competing, competing for space with the uh, 
powder measure scale back there. After we load a few of these, actually we can we can do it now. I have a uh, depth gauge. I'm sorry, not a depth gauge, but a case gauge. This happens to be um, a Dillon brand. Headspace gauge. Try to give you a close-up of the top there. And you can see that I'm not sure if you can tell with that or not, but it sits in there pretty well. You can check the ones we just loaded. Pretty flat in there. And uh, we'll continue here. Obviously not a very exciting process, but we'll just do a couple more. And uh, one thing, if you look at all the dies I have back here, that I've been able to do, except for a few of them, are uh, all pretty much from eBay and in the kind of the something no one wants category. And you just watch them until they get uh, close to closing and no one's bid on them and you get them for seven, nine, eleven bucks and maybe seven dollars a ship so <clears throat> usually you're paying about fifteen dollars for a set of dies that are obviously not the the most common or the ones that are used all the time but you get the the 3030s the 270s 30 odd six 4570 38 special is a pretty common one so that was cheap 22 250 couple of 223s, one full length and a small base, and a couple of small base 308s. And that's um, mainly because I ran into some issues with the full length dies cycling through the semi-auto AR style guns. So the small base dies are desirable for that. However, they do size pretty far down the, the shaft of the case causing um, more fatigue on the brass and they say you can't use uh, the brass as many times when you use small base dies to resize. I haven't run into that problem. I'm still kind of learning so I haven't shot enough to, to test that but as you can see just in that short amount of time there's probably at least 20 in there and we'll give those a run and see how how those go and uh, I'll report next from the range.